Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be uh, hooking up some lights on the back of my Jeep. So some of you may have seen my previous video. If you haven't, I'll put a link to it in the description where I installed this new back bumper with a tire carrier. And it came with these lights and I haven't ever gotten around to hooking them up. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I finally got around to, uh, I didn't put it on a video or anything, but I finally got around to reinstalling my third brake light. Um, so I found this C channel here uh, on Amazon rugged ridge I believe it was that's designed to extend this the factory third brake light so the way it's supposed to be used is you cut your third brake light off and then mount this to the original tire carrier and then to your third brake light and it's supposed to raise it up well since I wasn't using the factory tire carrier anymore I just went ahead and cut it off and then my tire carrier has these bolt holes for raising the tire up up and down depending on how big the tire is and so there's a set of bolt holes right here so i just got some long bolts and stuck it straight through through this and then drilled some holes and put my third brake light back on and that enabled me to put my dash cam the rear camera for the dash cam back on there just with some 3m tape of course the wire goes in and comes inside the tailgate runs along here and goes back up to the front so i've already done that and unfortunately i didn't film any of that so but i'm gonna film this for you today install or hooking these lights up I may not get to all of it today because it's late in the day and I'm getting a late start, but I'll get as much as I can and finish it in this video. But if you look in the corner back here, there is a rubber grommet there with some factory wiring. It comes down to the tailgate, or to the tail light, behind the tail light. So my plan is I'm gonna run a power wire from the front, I've got an auxiliary fuse box that I put underneath the, the hood. So I'm gonna run a power wire from here behind the tail light all the way to the fuse panel. I'm gonna hook it to a relay back here and then from the relay to the lights. And then I'm gonna tap off of the brake light, the third brake light or the the tail light, reverse light, and trigger the relay with the reverse light wire. So whenever the reverse lights come on, it'll flip the relay, then turning on the power or the lights. That's going to be the first step. The next step is I'm going to have a second re relay running off the same power wire, but I'm going to have it triggered by a switch inside the Jeep up on the A-pillar that'll then turn the lights on. So I'll be able to turn the lights on by a switch or they'll come on automatically whenever I put it in reverse. Don't know how much of that I'm gonna get to today, but uh, I'm gonna get started and see where we finish off. All right, stick around.
night, guys. As you can see there, I came through that rubber grommet down there across the back of the engine bay, which I'll be coming back and running it inside this wire loom. Um, this is wiring loom that I previously put in, the small one there. Uh, for an old antique style horn with a relay for it there. I'm probably gonna be rewiring that. I don't have the, the horn actually installed right now. It was installed inside my old front bumper and I haven't reinstalled it since I swapped out the bumper. But here's the uh, fuse panel that I installed. There's no heat fuses in it right now, um, but it's coming off off the power here. Got a thousand amp fuse in line going to the fuse panel. This fuse panel is rated at a max of a thousand amp, or a, I'm sorry, a hundred amps. So I have a hundred amp fuse fusing the fuse panel, and then of course each individual accessory will get its own fuse, and then I've got the fuse panel grounded here. I don't know if I'm going to actually be using the ground on these or not. Um, because most of the stuff that I'm going to use this fuse panel for, the individual items will be grounded. So the lights will be grounded to the bumper, which is grounded to the chassis, etc. and so on. So I don't think I'm going to have to run a, a ground wire all the way up here. But I'm going to go ahead and just leave this right here for now. I'm going to finish wiring up the lights in the back and then I'll come back and clean up this inside the, the loom. And the last thing I'll do is connect it to the fuse panel and test them out. And that's where we're at right now. I'm going to keep going. All right, guys, so I got a few or some relays here. And if you've never used these, what it does is you've got a main power wire coming in, which is what I ran here. And then your main power wire going from the relay to the light. The white in this case is the switched power and the black will be the ground. So you ground the relay, send a power wire from the relay to the lights. And then this white one in my case is gonna be what I'm tying into my reverse lights. So I've got to figure out which one of these is my reverse light. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the white one, but I'll have to test and make sure. So I'll tie into that and send it to the white. And so what that does is it has a constant power that comes from the blue, but it's broken inside the relay. The relay is, is basically a switch. And you activate the switch with the power coming from the t reverse lights. So when the power goes to reverse lights, this switch sends power that flips the switch connecting this main power wire to the yellow, which then turns the lights on. Hope that makes sense. If, you're, if it doesn't make sense, if I'm not explaining it well, there's plenty of videos out there I'll show you how to use relays. Um, this is actually a five pin relay um, that's not necessary in this case. The 87 is actually a continuous power, so whenever the power comes from the blue, it sends power out here until the switch is flipped. And then it turns this one off and turns this one on. And when you turn the reverse lights back off, then this power goes off and this power goes back on. I'm not using this one in this case. I could be just using some four pin relays that don't have this, but I had these already. So I'm gonna use them and I'll just cover up the end of the, the wire on that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on uh, connecting this relay up. I'm gonna be using, you know, I've got these, I already lost one of them. <laughs> oh, there it is. So this is the wires. And then, and then you just plug here. So instead of having to make a bunch of connections to connect here that can be prone to corrosion and bad connections, 
like I did on this one years ago. I didn't really know any better, but you can see those are not the best connections. So that's why I said earlier, I'm gonna be re redoing that one. Um, probably with one of these relays where I have a, a nice wiring harness. So to get started, I need to connect this blue wire to that red wire. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. I'll show you, I've got a couple of different tools here for making wiring easy. Um, so this is wire strippers and crimpers. And if you notice, it's got these different sizes here from 10 gauge all the way down to 22, 20 gauge. Um, so basically you just would put your, your wire in there about half an, half, half an inch or so, however much you want to strip. And then you just kind of pull on it and it just basically rips the, rips the connection off. You can kind of twist it and cut it, pre-cut it a little bit first. These are great. And then this, the crimpers up here, you notice they have colors. Well, mine's kind of worn off a little bit, but there's yellow, red, and then blue for the different notches for how, how big you want to, of a connector you want to crimp. Same thing with this. This one doesn't have the colors, but it's just the smallest one would be the red, the blue, and then the yellow is the, the biggest one. So you can crimp your connectors, connectors down using this. This Sorry about that, I got a neighbor with a really loud exhaust on their Mustang driving by. No, completely unnecessary. <laughs> but you know what? They like it, so more power to them. Anyway, these are my favorite crimpers because they're so easy. And if you see the little, it's got the number, wire gauge size there. So if you know your wire gauge and you just pick the one for the size, you put it in and this grips down on it with, when as you pull the trigger, see that little black gripping down on the wire and holds it. And then this part comes and opens up and strips the wire. Makes it really easy. I can't really do it with one hand. So I'm gonna set this phone down and see if we can't pick it up on the GoPro footage. Easy as that. Got your wire strip there, wire strip there. And now based on my wire size, I'm gonna use a, a blue connector. And some heat shrink tubing to cover it. So it's, Basically what I'm gonna do is you put the wire inside on one end, wire inside on the other end, then you crimp it down. Then you put heat shrink tubing over the whole thing and heat it up and it shrinks down and seals to keep it nice and watertight. Just like that, got a nice 
If you see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you should be able to see glue coming out of the end of the, the heat shrink tubing. That's how you know when it's not nice and sealed. Kind of off-centered it a little bit, but I've got enough on this side that it's, it should be sealed. I'm not real worried about it because there's not going to be a whole lot of moisture getting up inside of here. I mean, and that's where the connections are going to live in here. So, but now I've got to run from the yellow down to each one of the lights. So I'm going to make a connection here, run it down through. You can see this split line here that runs down through a hole there. So I'm gonna send a light or a line, line from the yellow down through that to the back of the bumper to each light. Um, I'm gonna try to let the GoPro ca footage capture as much of that as I can. So bear with me, but we'll get going. All right. So right now I just got the wire going through there. I'll stick it inside that split line later. But as you can see, it comes out down here underneath over to the lights. Yeah guys, I'm down here on the ground underneath the Jeep. I don't know if you can see the, the wire coming down here, but I'm basically following the path of this, this wiring loom, which is my trailer brake, or trailer wiring harness. And wire up as you can see the lights here anyway while I'm on the ground you can see this is really comfortable hopefully you're enjoying this video and if you are go ahead and hit subscribe like leave me a comment down below try to be nice share the video with your friends and uh, don't forget to hit that ring ring that notification bell so you can follow along with my videos. I'd really appreciate it. Gives me the motivation to be out here wanting to crawl around on the ground underneath the Jeep. All right, I'm gonna get back to the install here. All right, so there's the light on the back side of the bumper. Got the wire. The regular wire and the ground wire and the red should be power that's what i'm going to tie into my yellow line coming from the relay and then i'm going to just connect from here over to the other light so the connections i'm going to be using down here are these so they're a little spade connector male female end and so i'm going to put these on the wire for the light i'm going to put the, the female end on the wire here that way if i ever need to remove this bumper for whatever reason or i want to swap out the lights or do something i don't have to cut my wiring and just disconnect them but these are heat shrink compression fit or crimp fit the same as those other ones they just got the heat shrink already on them so you put your put your wire down in there crimp it right here and then heat it up and this will shrink down around the wire so i'm gonna go ahead and uh put these in on the lights first and then we'll do the other ones. Maybe hard for me to kind of film this underneath the bumper, so I'll do my best.
side. So I got the lights all connected together and grounded to the body. And here's my wire coming up from the lights. I need to connect here to the relay. And then I'll connect the ground to the relay and the white will go to the reverse light. So I think I'm just gonna ground it right here to the same ground and then do the white reverse light. I may actually ground it back here. Not on the tail light harness, but in the actual body. All right. So, I got the yellow connected. I just looped this over and taped it off because I'm not using it. That's the power. I got the ground connected to a ground here and the white connected to what I believe to be the reverse light switch. So, the lights are all connected, ready to go. I got the main wire going to the relay connected here. So all I gotta do is put in a fuse. All right, so fuse is in. Put the cover back on. Test it. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the video here. It's getting a little too long, so I'm gonna save the switch install for another video. But in the meantime, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, share the video, leave a comment down below. We'll try to be nice. Until next time, thanks for watching.